Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm going to be doing a few videos today. Uh, the first video is going to be on Roe versus Wade perspective of a medical student and what we were taught in medical school about what the intricacies are on, on Roe versus Wade. Um, and then obviously the news that came out last night about the potentiality of the overturning and, and giving it to the, the states instead of it being federally mandated um, in terms of abortion rights. Um, I wanna go over the hepatitis <clears throat> with children and my perspective on that. And then I'll do a, a brief video about the toll-like receptor um, number seven and NF, NF kappa beta and the increase in cytokines. So let's let's start with drinking the coffee. I'm looking at the market too. The market has opened up, and um, right now the S and P five, the uh, S S P Y spy is trading at about uh, four fourteen. Um, so it's, it's around near what it was at the close from yesterday. Treasury prices are going up today compared to yesterday, which is interesting. I think it's compared to the close, I think. Yeah, it's up a little bit compared to the close. And um, okay, so let's talk about roll versus weight. Um, last night, Roe versus Wade paper from, from one of the justices that are more conservative, Alito, uh, wants to overturn Roe versus Wade. Now, what last semester we went into detail because we were in um, the reproductive module of learning you know, female organ systems and the whole gestation process, the birthing, what sort of drugs to administer for contraction, um, um, what sort of drugs to administer after birth, um, you know, what are some of the complications that could happen with the placenta during gestation and all of that, you know, so we, we covered a lot in that module. And that block. So one of the lectures in reproductive, we, we went over some of the details of Roe versus Wade. Now this is from medical perspective, not the legal perspective, all right? So from the medical student point of view, we were taught that the court, when looking at Roe versus Wade divided the, the gestation into three different categories, three different periods, right? This is what we call, you know, the first trimester, the second trimester, the third trimester. And what the ruling was is that, I mean, you gotta remember this is back in the days where we didn't have very good scanning, very good ultrasound, we didn't have, you know, good amniocentesis. We didn't have uh, the molecular technology that we have today about the health of the fetus. Um, you know, so we can do a lot more with the technology that we have today than what they had back then. So we got to keep that in mind. But about 49 years ago, 50 years ago, there was this ruling, Roe versus Wade, where it allowed for individuals in the first trimester to abort the, the fetus, all right? Um, the female could abort the fetus without any questions, all right? And that the states could not, the states could not make that illegal. In the second trimester, states could regulate, but could not make it illegal uh, uh, abortion in, in the second trimester. And in the third trimester, 
it was up to states. So the ruling in from the, from the the medical student and the medical I don't know if you want to call it the group, right? Uh, the professions, the medical the medical profession seems to you know take it from the perspective that if you're in your third trimester states have the, the the right to to not just regulate but also um decide if an abortion could take place and what's been happening recently especially around 2018 in new york is late-term abortions or even during birth abortions so you could be fully gestated you're going through the you've gone through all 40 weeks of gestation you're you're birthing the child and in some states legislatures have passed that it was allowable to to um to cut the you know cut the 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 cervix, the the cervical cord in the neck um, to kill a child, all right? During birth, Um, you have in the spinal cord, you have the cervix, the thoracic, the lumbar, right? So you have the cervical area of the neck that you can cut that and that the child would die. That's actually one way that we euthanize some of the animals in, in, in our, in our uh, laboratory um, where you can basically dislocate their their brain to their spinal cord. But all right, so not to get too gruesome, but the point here is, is that they they ended up, meaning the liberals, ended up pushing policies in contemporary time to go all the way to the point of birth for abortions. And that was not the intent of Roe versus Wade. And I think this is the main theme that Justice Alito is is mentioning. This is that there is, that this thing has gone way beyond what the court was ruling on and what the court was, uh, you know, what the court was, um, the perspective, you know, they did give a, a room, some room back in the you know, 50 years ago where abortions were allowable with no questions and that that was the first trimester. Very little, very little could, could go wrong. I mean, there's things that could go wrong, but I mean, there, there's less things that could go wrong during that kind of abortion type process. On top of it, we have technologies today through pharmaceuticals where you have the plan B pill. They didn't have that back then. All right, so, so there's other means to, to fill the intent of what this court was siding on in the first trimester. And then it became a gray area for this, the second trimester where it was like, well, you can regulate it, but you should be able to, they were saying that you should be able to still allow it. Um, but that was with some, you know, we didn't have, again, we didn't have the technologies that we have today uh, and, the, and the different options that women have, especially with the, the plan B pill that could be given, administered at the very beginning of fertilization um, and to prevent the implantation. So from a, from a medical student's point of view, I think that Roe versus Wade, if left and that liberals weren't pushing their agenda in 2018 and in 2019 on late-term abortions or at-birth abortions, nothing would have happened. But because the liberals kept on pushing and pushing and pushing and having scope creep, it ended up where 
we have to stop the insanity. I mean, literally, these legislatures in New York were willing to, to kill a child during birth. Think about that. You reach full gestation, and it was legal at birth to do a, a, an abortion. Or just a couple days before birth. That's what they were pushing in, in legislatures. So they call it abortion health. You know, these liberals, they always spin it in a, in a certain way, you know, to try to soften the blow. You know what it really is? It's not abortion health. It's fetal killing. That's what it is. Fetal killing. You don't like it. for the, You know, you don't like hearing that, but it's fetal killing. Now, should women have some sort of ability to terminate the preg pregnancy in the first trimester? Yeah, I think I think so. You know, they, they, the the viability of the child. See, that was what the court was was kind of weighing on back during that that time period. Is is that at what point is the child viable, and that constitutional freedom should be um, protected? And with modern medicine, it becomes more and more in utero and less and less at birth. So, you know, when you're at the, let's say the 34 uh, week, you know, 28 to 34 week mark, and there is a preemie, um, you know, you, you have a, uh, um, you give birth to a preemie, they're gonna have pulmonary problems. The surfactant hasn't um, hasn't produced hasn't been produced in enough quantities, um, and the alveolar uh, sacs in in the lung uh, are premature, and you need that extra few weeks to be able to develop proper lungs. So this is the reason why a lot of preemies have pulmonary problems. But because of modern medicine, you know, some of these preemies at let's say 33, 32 weeks, maybe even younger, um, can survive with modern medicine, modern pediatric care. Um, back. 50 years ago, that wasn't the case. So that's why I'm saying that the rights of the, of the fetus is becoming more and more in utero rights versus rights at birth. Um, there is that gray area where that's the reason why you have the second trimester, you know, what's really going on there. Now, you're gonna have the religious that say no abortions. And then you're gonna have uh, the ultra liberal that's saying, I want abortion even at birth or even after, after birth, you know, the minute after birth, they should be able to decide if they want the child or not. Um, th that was the, the craziness that was going on with these quote abortion health care or abortion care. Um, so my my take on this my take on this is the liberals have pushed so far to the ex extreme that we need to reset in our society what abortion rights are allowable and I think not being a lawyer just looking at it from from a medical point of view I think what's going on at the Supreme Court is is that they're going to push it to the state level and the states are going to decide if you can have an abortion or not and that they're going to get the federal government out of the way now if I was one of the justices and of course I would be coming come from a um, a more conservative background, I think that um, totally illegaling um, abortion in the first trimester is the wrong policy. 
But I think that uh, when you're talking about the second or third trimester, I think that, um, you know what, unless it's, it, unless there is evidence in the second trimester of health concerns or the third trimester, health concerns of the mother, because some births or some gestations, some pregnancies can be very taxing on the, on the female and uh, could be life-threatening in some cases. It's not common, but it, it does happen. And in those cases, termination of the pregnancy should be allowed. In addition, if there's evidence of severe deformity or severe uh, problems during development, where spontaneous abortions, a, sp a spontaneous abortion is not happening because the body will sense something's wrong and it'll do a spontaneous abortion, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And through uh, either um, genetic sequencing or amniocentesis or through ultrasound, um, there shows deformity, then it should be the right of the parents to terminate the pregnancy. Um, so that should not be taken away from them. If the child is healthy in the second or third term, there's nothing wrong. And it's more of a, you know, it, it's, it's, it's more of an economic issue or if it's more of, uh, you know, some sort of social issue and not a medical issue for the abortion, then I think it should be banned. I think that you shouldn't be able to do it. Now, when I was younger, I didn't care about this issue. I didn't care about, the, you know, a guy, you know, in his 20s or even teens, he's not really thinking about these kinds of these issues. So I didn't really put that much thought into it. But as an adult and going through medical school and seeing what we can do in the, in, medically um, to try to take care of, of, um, of preemies um, and prenatal care, I think that abortions are killing. It's killing a, a fetus. It's killing a child. You can sugarcoat it all you want, but it's killing a human being. Within that whole gestation, over time, that fetus becomes more and more viable, especially when you hit past the 28 week mark. So once you get past the 28 week mark, um, you know, then you, then you, you know, obviously gestation at 28 weeks is not as good as gestation at 40 weeks or 38 weeks, right? But there is a cutoff where that cutoff is needs to be discussed. But I, you know, I think that the first trimester, someone should be able to terminate the pregnancy for whatever reason. Um, and it shouldn't be, um, the states shouldn't be able to disallow that. But after the first trimester, no, no, no. I think that unless there is a medical reason for the mother or the viability of the fetus to have a quote normal life, um, you know, then, then you should, if there's evidence of that, that the, the fetus is deformed in such, in such a way, but a spontaneous abortion isn't gonna happen or they don't think it will happen, then it, the parents should make the decision if they want to terminate the pregnancy and, and try to, um, you know, try to have another pregnancy. Um, because they're the ones that are going to have to bear the burden of a child that is, um, you know, that has deformities or has, you know, you know, many issues. Um, you know, they're going to have to pay for that. They're going to have to go through that social stress, right? So they should be making that decision. Um, in those cases, but if the child is completely viable, and, you know, and they're in their second trimester, and the female wants to, the, the mother wants to abort, but there's nothing wrong with the fetus, that in the second trimester, no, that should be illegal. That's killing. That's killing a child. Um, and you know, that's my take on it. 
you know, that's, that's my take. Now you're going to hear a lot of liberals spin in it that you're, you know, the, the, the conservative justices are overturning your abortion care, you know, and not focusing on that with modern technology. And they say that we had 50 years or 49 years of precedence. It was based on certain assumptions and medics, medicine moves forward. And I think we're starting to see a change in the zeitgeist of in the United States. And I think that as a, as a country, we will prosper better and we will have a, a, a better blessing over the nation when we stop killing children in utero. Um, now, again, there are cases where you need to do this because of health concerns or because of fetal viability or, what, or deformities or whatever. Um, but most abortions, and this is, these are facts, but most abortions are because of economics or some sort of social reason. It's not because of medical reason. So that's my take on Roe versus Wade. I think it needs to be overturned and pushed to the states, but the states should not be able to make it completely illegal in the first trimester. And if there's medical reasons uh, in the second trimester or the third trimester for the mother, then uh, then uh, abortion should be be able to be performed to save the life of the mother. Um, and if there is some sort of major deformity, major uh, major concern that takes place during the second or third trimester um, for the fetus, then the parents should be able to make the decision if they want to, um, to bring that child into this world um, or try to start a, 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 you know, a new pregnancy. It should be their choice. But if there's something, nothing, if there's nothing wrong with the fetus, then there should be constitutional rights protecting that fetus. That's my take on it. I think it's the middle ground. I don't think it's too far to the, to the right where they say all abortions should be stopped. And I don't think it's too far to the left where they're saying, uh, you know, at birth abortions are okay. Thank you for listening. That's my take on it. I'm gonna be doing a, I'm gonna be doing a show with Daryl and we're gonna be talking about hepatitis. Um, and uh, we're going to, uh, go into a little bit of detail about what I think is going on. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.